Liner Queen Elizabeth leaves Southampton docks loaded with Canadian repats on their way to Halifax. With the signal set at full speed ahead, there's no zigzagging or waiting for the convoy on the trip back home. Life on the ocean wave is a great game when you're homeward bound. Even though there are no tin fish in the sea, boat drill is carried on just the same. The galley operates on American rations, so everybody's happy. The advantage of an upper berth is that it's more private, even if you have further to fall when the sea gets rough. All eyes are strained to catch the first glimpse of the beloved shoreline of Nova Scotia. Entering Halifax Harbor in the teeming rain, the greatest array of humanity to ever land at the eastern port from a single ship, it's the last signpost of their final voyage. One of the two div units, the Toronto Scottish, are first ashore. Montreal, Le Fusiliers, Montreal, veterans of Dieppe and the Western Front, march through the streets of their hometown to the baseball stadium. Here a ceremony of welcome is conducted by Archbishop Charbonneau and by a former CO of the regiment, Brigadier Gavro, DSO. Canada is indeed sincere in her welcome to homecoming sons and daughters who have been a credit to her on foreign fields. Now the next step is City Street. With Canada going on record that Britain shall not suffer through lack of food, hog farms in the Dominion go all out to meet the demand. Any resemblance which may be seen here to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. On a typical hog farm, government inspectors stamp piglet's ears with farmer's initials and the pig's regimental number. Full records are kept of each squealer to aid the rationing system. The most advanced methods of feeding are used to raise prime porkers to the fat age of maturity. At various points, the Department of Agriculture operate test stations. Here, stock is brought from each farm for fattening and observations as to breed quality. At the Panoka Livestock Pool, the finished products arrive for transportation to packing houses. Here they are loaded onto trains which transport them on the next step of their way to becoming bundles of bacon for Britain. After being taken for their one-way ride, they arrive at the packing plant where they lose their numbers and become just so many points on the ration. Canada's hog production and export is today the highest of any nation in the world. It is nearly five times that of after World War I. With four-fifths of her wartime ham and bacon exports continuing to go to Britain, the Dominion is playing a stellar role in the fight to maintain the meat ration standard in the UK. In occupied Germany at the first light of dawn, Troops are briefed for a mass checkup of German residents. Divided into areas, the whole countryside is scientifically searched by various units of the CAOF. The Nova Scotia Highlanders give the once over to a district in the northern plains of Germany. 
Identification cards are checked in the search for those who are still hiding from Allied justice. Houses are combed for hidden firearms, Nazi literature, or anything pertaining to the super race creed. Further questioning is given those who don't give the right answers. Even illegal stills are discovered and their contents disposed of. There'll be no more bottles of bad Jerry jungle juice turned out by this bootlegger. Those Germans whose papers are not in good order are taken to an advance headquarters. Intelligence officers deal with most matters on the spot. If the case is serious, it is handled by military government officials and higher authority. Thus, the security parties of the CAOF are on the job to see that Germany remains for all time on the straight and narrow. A special wing of the Canadian government's Department of Veterans Affairs deals with all men who have lost limbs in the war. First, skilled craftsmen fit them with artificial limbs. While this is going on, exercises and games are carried out to increase the efficiency of the veterans in getting along without their lost memory. All the time they are readjusting themselves for civvy life. Then the artificial limbs are fitted on and training is given in the best way to use them. The results are truly remarkable. reaches the point where he can get a job and settle down to a normal wage earning life. Employers report such employees as good as and often better than unimpaired workers doing the same task. Fully rehabilitated for work and play, the amputee serviceman takes his place as a normal citizen in the building of a dominion he helped to save. Down the Champs-Élysées from the Arc de Triomphe marches the pipe band of the CWAC. Under the direction of Pipe Major Lillian Grant of Victoria, B.C., the Helan lassies from the Dominion are the toast of Gay Paris. The French crowds go wild at the skirl of their pipes. Taking a salute on the march past is General Vanier, Canadian ambassador to France. After marching around the Place de la Concorde, the band is received in the Tuileries Gardens by General and Mrs. Vanier. A lead pipe cinch for top popularity wherever they go is the pipe band of the CWAC. It's time for the face-off in Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens in the opening game of the National Hockey League series. Nick and Don Metz put on the padding while McCool, the Toronto goalie, prepares for sensational saves. There'll be some great stick handling tonight as the Bruins and Leafs start after the old pennant. Private Smokey Smith, VC, drops the rubber to start the first period on its way to history and the battle is on. Victoria Cross winners are the guests of honor. They watch some mighty fast play as Boston continually beats back Toronto drives to their neck. Record crowds in the Carlton Street Hockey Palace sure get their money's worth as the flashing blades tear up the ice.
scoreless first period, and Connie Smythe and Major Tilston settle down to watch Boston break away from a tight corner in front of their net. Schill has the puck. He's past the blue line. He shoots. He scores. That's one up for the Bruins as they go into the third period. This time the Leafs take the offensive and a real, a real bid to even up the score. Davidson makes the lone score for the Queen City. He ends the game with the final score, Boston Bruins 1, Toronto Maple Leafs 1.